making our secret sauce and you know competing against you and winning so Shafika, you can it's all over to you now i i know that you are excited to tell us a little bit more and we are happy to hear what you have to say so i am just going to clip you there i don't know if you want to stand or if you want if you're comfortable okay Put it on. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, rest the knees. It's been a long year. Um, <laughs> Honorable Prime Minister and everyone else here, um, my sponsors, ECGC, KFC, Careers Distribution, and Careers Limited. Um, my manager, my mom, my dad, my family, my grandma, everybody who is here today. Um, came out and welcomed me back. Um, thank you guys for being here. I re really appreciate it so much. Um, I don't have to worry about sharing the secret. The secret is out there for everyone. It's God and he, he's for everyone. So <laughs> I ain't got to hold that secret to myself. Um, everyone know um, the journey to Paris was not easy, but um, eventually I got some help and it, it made a difference mentally and physically and emotionally for me um, to see that there were people here who cared about me and the journey and what am I here trying to do for the country. Um, Paris was a little bit nerve-wracking um, all year. I ran 158 indoors and outdoors I had only ran 159 and there was one meet um, going into Paris. It was the London Diamond League and there everybody ran like 154, 155, 156. Call my coach. I was like, Coach, um, this 159 ain't gonna cut it, cause you know everybody out here running fast. He was like, B, you you just don't worry about it. I was like, okay. Um, two weeks before Paris, um, I was I was I, I got there early. I did the photo shoot with Bandit, who sponsored our um, Olympic kit. Shout out to Bandit, representing. Um, I was there training, and training was hard. Um, I've had a year, I'm an overachiever, I'm a perfectionist, and when coach gives me times in practice, I want to hit my times and run even faster. And I've had a whole year of that, even without, you know, the stuff that I needed. And it came down to Paris, and I wasn't making the times no more. And it wasn't that I was out of shape, I just, I, I didn't know what was going on. He later explained to me that I had loaded up and it was time to just back off. Um, so I, I was a little nervous. I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. And I called him crying one night. I was like, Coach, um, <laughs> uh, I run next week and things are not looking too hot. And he reassured me that I was, I was going to be okay. Um, but leading up to Paris, I was in some shoes that they were giving me problems. My Achilles started hurting. I couldn't walk on both of my feet. Um, my hamstrings were falling apart. Everything was just going wrong. And I was just like, I, I'm... This was on the Wednesday, and I was just like, um, I run in a couple of days, and <laughs> I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be okay. Um, but in the Olympic Village, they have a poly clinic, and I went to the poly clinic um, to get looked after because I, I was out of options. We didn't have our own team doctor and stuff, so I was trying to use the resources that I had. And I went there, and one of the things they wanted to do was an MRI for my hamstring. They weren't even looking at the feet, but. Um, but at the time, it was like 12 p.m. and didn't, they didn't have an appointment until 5 p.m. So I was like, I'm set my appointment for 5 and I'll come back. So I went back to my room and it was like 4.30. I was like getting ready to go back to my appointment. But I got a call from one of my teammates that trained with me in Arkansas, but she's from Jamaica. She was like, Fee, you want to go to Bible study? And I got to the point, I hear Bible study. I'm dropping everything and I'm going. So I'm like, yeah, I want to go to Bible study. And after I got off the phone, I realized like my appointment at 5, but Bible study was at 4.30. I just like, okay, I'm going to just go, stay as long as I can, and 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 we going, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I went, and I never left Bible study. Um, but when I got back to my room, all my pain had gone. And that was the first time I realized that God was with me out there. I was also nervous. It's the Olympics. It's, it's my second time here, you know. I have sponsors. whole country is looking at me. I was getting a little bit nervous, and... Um, I, I always read my Bible every morning and just have a little worship time with God. And one of the scriptures that really calmed my heart and gave me peace was Deuteronomy 1, 29 to 31, I think. 
and sometimes when you read the Bible, you can, I think people, sometimes people wonder how is God speaking to you. And I used to think it's like a voice coming out for here, like talking about some, hi, I'm here or something like that. It's not that. And when you read scriptures, certain things stick out to you. And that's one of the ways I realized that God was speaking to me. And Deuter Deuteronomy 1 was one of the scriptures that also reminded me that God was there with me. Um, for the heats, coach was just like, we're not trying to go to the rapid charge round. I was like, okay, top three, that's all I got to do. Say less. I went out there, and I, I ran, and I was just like, I don't know. I don't remember the race, honestly. I don't remember the race. <laughs> but I remember coming off that turn, and I think I was in, like, fifth or something, and I was just like, we're not going to the rapid charge round. And I shifted gears, and next thing I know, I was in third. As y'all seen, I was boxed in. I, I don't know how I always get boxed in. But um, one, one of the things I realized is that, when you run, you're going to lose. You have to lose. It builds character, and you learn. If you learn something from the races that you lose, you never really lost. And my first two meets in Europe, when I went up before Paris, I lost. I lost my 800 in Hengelo. I was boxed in, and I panicked, and I tried to come out of the box and just messed up my rhythm and everything. And I remember that in Paris, and I was just like, this is the same thing that happened in Hangalo, and you try to, you panic, you try to get out of there and mess up the whole race. So I stayed patient, and I figured something on the inside was going to open up, and it did. Um, in the semifinals, that one was, it's like top two. There's 24 of us out there, it's top two, and it's make it or break it to make this final. I realized the girls that I would be running with, but I had that mentality, I don't care what you ran before you come in here, when you step on this line, you better be ready to go. Um, and again, I got boxed in, and I think like 120 meters to go, I called on the Lord, because I was just like, I don't, I don't know what else was going to happen. And as soon as I did that, a path opened. And I felt like there was like a breeze like pushing me down the street. If you look at the race, you just see me just going by everybody. And I was just like, I was in disbelief. I was just like, and those two races, was just, I was out there like, God really is with me out here. And so going into their finals, I was just like, if Deuteronomy, I can't remember the whole scripture, but like in the last part, it said that same God who carried, to, carried you through Egypt and the wilderness will carry you through whatever you're going through right now. And I just like, God didn't bring me this far to leave me. He didn't, care. He didn't take me through everything that I went through last year. Like last year when I was training, even though I didn't have the things to get massages or what, I never got injured. I never got injured. I was always able to go back into practice. I, I might be in pain or whatever the case is, but I was always able to go back into practice and do whatever I needed to do to get injured. I'm just like, God didn't carry me through all of that. He didn't put me in a position to make the standard, bring me all the way to Paris to just leave me here. And so I had to trust, trust that going into the finals. And I definitely wish I had a medal. It, it was right there every time. I'm, I don't like looking at the race because I'm reminded of how close I was to getting a medal. But um, after the race, I laid on the ground in disbelief like the medal was right there. And I know some time to get up off the ground. I got up off the ground and during all my races, you know how the media is. Everybody, everybody had knew my story by then. And every time I get done running, they want to know, they want to know. And for me at that time, it hurt talking about it because it was a lot to go through. Like nobody want to be homeless and going through all the things that I'm going through. And so after every race, after the media stuff, I cried. I went to coach and I cried. And he's like, why are you crying? Sometimes it was tears of joy and sometimes it was just like, I'm tired of answering the same questions and just reliving that moment. But in the finals, when I got up off the ground and I went up to the media folks and they asked me about it again, it was the first time I felt peace and joy about the situation because then I realized if all that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been where I, I was at that time because I had to be homeless to meet the people that I had to meet to get closer to God and just trust him in the season and the storm that was coming up. And so I think after the finals is when I really just just took some time to appreciate, you know, how far I came and what I was able to achieve and I didn't I didn't come home with a gold medal but, you know, I got God and that's all I need. And I'm definitely looking forward to 2028 to go get my medal that I missed out on. It's on my mind. <laughs> it is on my mind. But before then, you know, I have the world championships and stuff next year. So I'm taking it one day at a time, one year at a time, and just focusing on, 
what's next and right in front of me. I can't be in 2024 thinking about 2028. I got to do all the things that I got to do now to make sure I get there healthy and able to do what I have planned to do. And that is to go get my medal that I missed out on. <laughs> and it's, it's going to take me continue to, you know, believing in God and just trusting in the plans that he has for me. And hopefully all my sponsors will still be there with me and, you know, just going through this journey with me. And thank you guys for everyone for welcoming me back, my family. Happy to see my mom and my dad and just you know I feel the love and all the appreciation so thank you oh, what a journey what a journey it was and I know in just listening to Shafika tell it how emotional it was not just the fact that we're listening but we, we went through that journey with her as she's speaking it and we understand how important it is and Shafika I hope persons listen to your story very well about the fact that if you didn't have God with you you would not have been able to make that journey I know you know personal times how many times we would have prayed together and you know those words of, of, of prayer would have really helped you to you know keep your mind down and and all of that so that journey and that that commitment to your relationship with Jesus Christ first before you step on the field was really what it would have helped and I hope it would inspire other persons to have that walk with God as well and uh, we have a special presentation to for you Shafika before we ask our Prime Minister to give his remarks and then we, we open up the questions to the press um, we'll just invite our friend here from <laughs> NBC Radio is going to give you that special presentation on behalf of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Tourism Authority. All right, so thank you very much, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Tourism Authority, for that special presentation.